I met with a man recently who was going through a, what I would call a prolonged season of pretty intense difficulty. We sat over the table at a restaurant and he began to pour out of his heart the problems he'd been facing. There were difficulties in his marriage, problems with his children, health issues, pretty significant issues financially and in his career. And, and he described it, you could just look at the pain in his eyes. And he started saying things like, I'm tired, I, I can't do it anymore. I just feel so weary, I, 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 can't, I can't keep doing this. It, it was as if he was saying, life is not working. Like somehow the, the switch was turned off. And as he, as he finished telling me the story, detail after detail after detail, I, I knew he just needed to talk. Sometimes it's just, it's just necessary to talk in a, in a safe place. I, I'd listened the best I could. And then he started shifting towards God. He says, Pastor, you, you, you always tell us that God is good. He's always good. He's always doing good things in our lives. But where is that good God now? Why didn't he stop me if he knew I was going to have this kind of pain in my marriage? Why would he allow my child to go through that difficulty? And he named the difficulty. Why would I be shut down in my career and other people advance in front of me when I'm trying to do the right thing and honor God? Where's God? Where is God? This has gone too long and I can't do it anymore. I'm tired. I'm weary. I don't think I'm going to trust God. In fact, he said this. It really shook me. He said, if God's out there and he said, I'm not really sure anymore that he is. If he's out there, I don't think he cares a blank blank about me. I think it's all about me. Whatever I can do with my life, that's where it's going to go. And I don't think the God part really matters. I watched this man over the last few months and um, I think things are getting better, but for a while, he just stopped participating in church. He stopped giving financially. He stopped the whole prayer, Bible reading, just kind of doing the right things to be close to God. I think he's getting better, but it just awakened in me. In fact, I, maybe some of you feel like your story would relate to this man that I know. You might say, man, you just, that's my story. I feel so tired so weary, uh, you know, the coronavirus and, and uh, the pain we all feel regarding discrimination in our country and the violence and the hatred and, oh gosh, help us, Lord, and the political atmosphere and the economy is, is just tanking. And you, you feel all that and it causes you to be at odds with your spouse and be on edge with your kids and find yourself weary, tired, discouraged, disappointed, depressed. Those are the kind of words that I hear from people. And as, the, as this man finished his story, there was a silence and he, and with penetrating eyes, he looked right at me and I knew he wasn't asking me, but he was asking me silently, like, Pastor, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? What are you going to say? I looked at him and what I said to him, I would say to you today, if you feel that weariness and that sense of tired and fatigue and don't know what to do. And where's God? Where's God? Where's God? What I said to him, I would say to him, frankly, I would say it to myself because I feel intense weariness, that battle in my own life right now. I would say this, don't be weary. Keep doing the right thing. Don't be weary. Don't let weariness control you. Keep doing the right thing. I've been thinking about that, that thought in reference to some Bible verses, and I've been wanting to share this with the church now for about a month and a half, and today is that day, and I'm thrilled to share with you from the, from the Bible, from Galatians chapter 6. Uh, list, listen to these words. It says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. 
the one who sows to please the Holy Spirit from the Spirit will reap life. Here's, this, here's the verse. Let us not become weary in doing good, doing the right thing. Don't become weary in doing the right thing. For at the proper time, ooh, that's powerful. At the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It's a beautiful picture talking about the principle of sowing and reaping. And it says it emphatically. Uh, in fact, let's just go back through this. I just want to take time to unpack these couple of verses and, and, and just let the Holy Spirit speak to you today. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Don't be deceived. Deception, deception is a tool of our enemy, the devil. He is deception personified. He is the deceiver. The first thing that he did with humans, he came into the garden with Adam and Eve, and he pulled Eve away from her husband for from protection and began to pose questions in her mind about God. And it, everything blew up. She sinned against God, and later God came and had a conversation with her and says, Eve, why did you do this? What happened? And she simply said, the serpent deceived me, and that's why I did it. A lot of times the reason we pull back and a lot of times why we stop doing the good thing, the right thing, is we get deceived. We get tricked in our thinking that it doesn't matter anyway. I pray and I keep praying, but nothing changes, so why pray? I gave and I gave quite a few times, but nothing changed, so I'm going to quit giving. I, I forgave my spouse a few times thinking that it would work because you keep telling me I need to forgive, but nothing really changed, so I quit. So the deception means to believe a lie instead of the truth. So if, if I'm trying to do the right thing when things are difficult, I have to guard my mind because deception's my enemy. And, and, the, and then deception then plays into the second thing. There's actually three things in this passage it says don't do. Don't be deceived, don't get weary, and don't give up. And they actually work together because if we start thinking wrong, we get deceived thinking, oh, God, he's not going to come. Like this man I was talking to, it's over. God doesn't care. I've heard those things, but it's just not working. I don't think God really is that involved. If you start thinking wrong, deception, it can, it can lead to the place where you become so weary and fatigued trying to do the right things that you stop. And the moment we stop doing the right things, we're, we're headed down the wrong path. We're, we're, we're cutting ourselves off from the promise that you will reap, but I don't see it yet. I can't promise you when it will come. I can't promise you how it will come, but I can promise you if you keep doing the right thing, even when life is so painful, and so difficult, you keep doing the right things. What's the right thing? Well, you keep praying, believing God's there, keep reading the Bible, stay committed to church, keep living a generous life, tithing, giving, keep positive relationships, forgiving, letting go of pains, hurts, unforgiveness. Yeah, you, you keep doing the right thing, knowing in your heart, your mind will tell you no. Deception tells you it won't work. Deception, the voice of deception says it won't work. And the voice of weariness says it's just taking too long, quit. And how many times have all of us probably had a, a short season, hopefully, where we just kind of gave up and quit? And it just didn't seem like God was there, like he didn't care. In fact, nobody cares. I'm on this by myself. It becomes weariness. Deception leads to weariness, trying to do the right thing. And suddenly, uh, we're not reaping. And, 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 and I hear the Holy Spirit speaking as I felt him speaking through me that day to the gentleman in the beginning of my message, the gentleman sitting at the restaurant over the table, over the meal, talking about his life, unpacking the pain. We came to the same conclusion. I pleaded with him, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't let the weariness own you. Don't let the wrong thinking, the deception convince you that God's not there and that he doesn't care and it's not going to work because those are lies. Deception is lies. Stay in the truth. God is good. He works everything together for good. In our world today, there's pain. Dear God, help us. 
so many contributing factors in our world that would lead us to these same conclusions that we're just so weary and fatigued, we'll let our guard down, and then we begin to believe the deception. God doesn't care. This is never going to work. My life's always going to be difficult and bad. Nothing will ever work. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you the end of this. Don't be weary in doing good. At the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I'm pleading with you as your pastor today. I feel like I'm speaking on God's behalf today. Yeah, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't let the weariness own you. Don't let the deception get into you and cause you to think so strongly into the world of negative that you begin to get off the path. Stay in the truth. Keep doing the right thing. Keep sowing. If you keep sowing, you'll reap. You know, it's interesting when you sow. I, I used to, my dad was a big gardener and had a about a half acre in the backyard, always growing vegetables, fed the neighborhood, and I was his helper. And he taught me, you know, you got to be patient. You drop the seeds in the ground. He and I would go down the long rows, and he would poke the hole, and I'd drop the seeds in. And we would water them, and i go out thinking they're going to be there the next day as a kid. And it takes weeks before you see a little sprout come up, and you keep watering and working. Certainly becomes a, a beautiful, full-grown plant. And at the right season, fruit comes. And at the right time after it's ripened, it's delicious and nourishing and strengthening. I'm here to tell you, your sowing is not in vain. Your sowing, your, your, your doing the right thing is not in vain. Living a pure life is not in vain. Being accountable to good people and honest about where you are is a good thing. Do the right thing. Stay connected to the church in this time when we can't be together is doing the right thing. Keep doing the right thing. I'm telling you, uh, I, 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 I know some of you probably say, you know, it seems like I'm doing the right thing, <laughs> but I'm not seeing the right results. Well, it's a timing issue. It says at the proper time, no one can tell you the date and the hour. But we can tell you based on God's truth that never lies. And the Bible also says that God shows no partiality. He's not a respecter of persons. And this, this principle works for everybody at any time. We reap what we sow. We reap what we sow. I, I, so three things he told us not. Don't be, don't be deceived. Don't be weary. And don't quit. And the one thing he says to do, I've already said it five or six times, keep doing the right thing. And at the proper time, you'll reap a harvest. I remember my own story many times, particularly when I was a young Christian. I was saved at the age of 17. And um, shortly after that, God gave me a dream, showed me a picture of me standing on a platform and preaching and called me to be a pastor. It's a big dream in my heart. So I, I made the big plans. I graduated high school, went to college, went to seminary, studied the Bible. It was flourishing for me. It was working out well. Uh, I was traveling and speaking. I was a licensed pastor at the age of 20 and helping in a church while I was in college. And then in the beginning of my senior year of college, um, I, uh, well, I guess you'd call it, I, I, I encountered a very difficult, life-altering personal tragedy. And, and this, situ this situation was not caused by myself. I didn't do anything wrong. Actually, it was a person who did something wrong to me. And it, it shut me down. I mean, everything in me and even some people around me said, it just quit. You know, you, you can't fulfill that dream. It's over. You can't be a pastor now because of what's happened in your life. And for, for a short time, I, I found myself just overwhelmed, numb, shut down, just so tempted, so tempted to quit, so weary in trying to be this guy that I thought God wanted me to be because I was just shut down by the circumstance I was facing. And, and, and in the midst of all that, I, I, I sensed the Holy Spirit. Aren't you thankful for the Holy Spirit when He speaks? Aren't you thankful for the Holy Spirit? We talk about God working in your life. The Holy Spirit's always working and speaking and prompting you. I sense the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Keep doing the right thing. Keep doing the right thing. So even though I was a little bit disgraced 
uh, in, in Bible college. And even though it was awkward, I went right back to college and I graduated with my class. And I could not go into the ministry. I could not be a pastor at that time because of the circumstances. So I just decided to keep doing the right thing. I, I, I got involved in a church and I was a server, a servant, and I was a leader when they asked me to lead. I was one of the biggest givers in the church. I gave tithes and offerings. I was a worshiper. I was a man of prayer. I was a man of the Bible. I kept studying the Bible, reading the Bible. I decided to just do my very best. Now, it was difficult. I'm not saying it was easy. It was difficult. There were times when I felt weary and thought maybe I should quit, give that stuff up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't work. No, just keep doing the right thing. I didn't just do it for a few months. I did this for 20 years. 20 years. <laughs> I kept doing my best. God help me. I'm going to keep doing the right thing. I want to be a really faithful, committed Christian. I know that I'm going to reap from the sowing. If I keep doing the right thing, I'm going to reap the great results. 20 years later, in Seattle, Washington, I was asked to come on staff of a church in the role of a pastor. I reaped an incredible result. Keep doing the right thing. And you'll reap from what you sow. Yeah, like I said earlier, I, I can't tell you the timing for what you're going through, when it'll change, and I, I, I can't tell you how it's going to happen. Can't do that. Nobody can tell you that. But what I can tell you is what these verses say. Don't be deceived. <laughs> don't be weary. And don't quit. <laughs> Three don'ts. And keep doing the right things. It's not that complicated. Keep forgiving. Keep loving people. Hang in there with your marriage. Ask one more time for your husband or your wife to forgive you. Uh, spend that time with your children, believing you can win their heart back. Uh, keep being generous, even when you're kind of going through a difficult financial time. Forgive, serve, just keep, read the Bible, pray. Keep, hear my heart, please. I'm telling you, this is life altering in the consequences that it brings if we just keep doing the right thing. I feel like I'm the Proverbs guy. I'm bringing you a proverb, really, a, a wise saying. Keep doing the right thing for a really long time. You're going to reap incredible. I see favor coming your way. I see doors opening. I see prosperity coming. I see a healing coming to your emotions. I see darkness coming off of some of you, a heavy darkness that caused you to feel overwhelmed and weary and fatigued. I, I, I see a stronghold that has limited you. It's like it goes around. You, you, you kind of deal with it, and it comes back to control you again. I see it broken off and completely destroyed, and you living in freedom the rest of your life. Those kind of things happen, because not because of my opinion, because of God's opinion. Keep doing the right thing, and you'll reap the results. I'm thinking of David, King David, who wrote the, uh, most of the Psalms in the book of Psalms, very poetic, a great worshiper. David, was uh, he went through a lot of pain, a lot of difficulty, a lot of times where he did not know what to do. And in Psalm 27, one of those, he describes uh, difficulty, discouragement, people coming against him. Uh, he could basically be living in 2020. He could be describing what you and I are feeling with the coronavirus and all the atmosphere and all the difficulty, relationship conflicts and the economy that are happening right now. It's kind of like he's writing the psalm in a similar circumstance. And towards the end of that, I love the statement. He said, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I, I, I would have just gotten so weary, I just fainted and quit. But I believed that you reap what you sow. I believe that I will see, not now, but will, I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And I love the next verse. Based on that, I would have fainted unless I believed that I would see the goodness of God. I'm going to keep doing the right thing and keep believing. Then he says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Wait, wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait, I say. Endure the weariness. Be strong. Wait on the Lord. He'll come through. Maybe people will not come through perfectly. 
Maybe the contract might come, might not come through perfectly. The deal might not close in your timing, but I'm telling you, don't lose heart. You will see the goodness of God. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Don't give up. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray because I, I, I believe these two verses in Galatians. I'm going to read them again, then I'm going to pray them to you. Pray, pray these verses over our church today. I believe uh, uh, this is a, what we would call uh, a, a relevant now message from God for our church. It's been brewing in my heart for weeks, and I feel this is the perfect weekend for it. And I uh, just pray you have ears to hear, and you say an amen to it. And you say, yeah, I, I, I'm going to keep doing the right thing. Let, let, me, let me just read it to you again. I want to pray. And Galatians 6 says, do not be deceived. Say this out loud where you're saying, I will not be deceived. Turn, if you're with somebody, turn to them and say it to each other. Say, I will not be deceived. <laughs> I will not be deceived. Because God cannot be mocked. Meaning that if he says you're going to reap what you're sowing, you're going to reap what you're sowing. Both good and bad. He's, you can't mock God and say it doesn't work. No, you can't. It, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, doing things that are not so good, you reap some corruption. But the one who sows to please the Holy Spirit, to follow God's truth, to sow with a right heart, you're going to reap life. So let us not become weary. Listen to me, church. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, there is a time, there's a proper time coming. There's a turn in the road. There's a corner for you. It's going to get better. At the proper time, we will, not might, not maybe, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep doing the right thing. And think about what would the right thing look like to you? Just, in fact, we'll maybe study this in our groups this week. What, is the, what does it look like to do the right thing? L let your heart say what they are. When you feel so fatigued, you don't feel like your prayers are working anyway, that's when I just uh, I push through and maybe my prayer is not as powerful as a few days ago, but I'm just going to pray anyway. I'm going to read the scriptures even when I'm frustrated. I'm going to be a part of church. I'm going to forgive people who've run me. Whatever it takes, I'm going to keep doing the right thing, knowing I have set in motion a divine principle of God that will never be mocked. I will reap from my soul. Father, I pray in Jesus' name for everyone listening in their home, in their car, wherever they might be. I pray this word, this message, these scriptures would be so relevant and so focused it would touch, it would fit the need of every heart that's listening. We, what we, right now, we ask, Holy Spirit, would you help us to dismantle the wrong thinking, the stronghold Satan's put in our mind saying it doesn't matter. It does matter what we do. It's never going to happen. Yes, it will happen. Help us to dismantle the wrong thought, the wrong <laughs> concepts, and, and, and help us to set in our mind a vision of where we're going. We're headed to the place of reaping. We're headed to the place of the harvest. We're headed to the place of divine favor. We're headed to the place of reconciliation. We're headed to the place of personal self-esteem and value. We're headed to the place of freedom, to the place of worship, to the place of the presence of God. We're headed there. We're going to sow today and reap these things in our tomorrows. I pray everyone listening would say, that's me, I'm in it, I'm making the change today. I'm going to keep doing the right thing. I pray this in Jesus' name, in Jesus' holy name. We can do this in Jesus' name. Before we close today, I, I want to ask if maybe if you're watching whatever day, wherever you are, uh, you have this sense that, you know, I, man, I, I kind of, I don't know where I am with God. I, maybe I've kind of gotten off path. I've gotten discouraged. I don't, I'm not really serving God. Or maybe you've never actually attempted to have a relationship with God. Wherever you are, I'd like to pray a prayer with you right now. If you'd like to come into 
a relationship with Him. I want to lead you in a prayer. It's like becoming a Christian, being saved from your sins. I want to lead you in this prayer right where you're seated, right where you are. And, and I believe that, um, that you pray this from the heart. The Bible says if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. It's, it's so simple. That's why some people miss it. It's just simple. Just wherever you are, if you need God today, you need to, you need to come into a relationship with God so He can help work things out together in your life and bring good. Just pray this word. Say, Jesus, I bring my life to you today. Every part of it. I hold nothing back. I need you desperately. I need peace. I need comfort. And I need direction. And I believe you will give those to me. Would you forgive me for everything I've done wrong? I want to be a Christian. <laughs> I want to follow you the rest of my life. I say this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you pray that prayer, uh, super, super proud of you. Great move. Best decisions you've ever made. There's, I think there's a button or a link on the screen. You can click that and let us know you're kind of raising your hand. You're saying yes to Jesus. Click that. We'd like to be in touch with you. And, Find some way that we can encourage you and help you in your journey as you grow in your relationship with God. So proud of you. We want you to be connected to the church. We want to be your church family. We want to help you grow and, and, and learn how to enjoy the best life that God offers us. Thank you all for listening to me today. And I just pray you take these words to heart. You're irreversibly convinced that God cannot be mocked. What I'm doing, I'm initiating. Every time I'm doing something, I'm initiating something happening. The result, cause and effect. I reap what I sow. And it's not the time to stop doing the right things. It's time to keep doing the right things because just ahead, amazing, an amazing time of harvest, reaping, blessing, comfort, and favor is coming your way. God bless you. Thanks for listening to me today. I'll see you again next week online.